Welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel, where I press the record button with the tip of my spear, which has a light on it, to which I will get in a few minutes. So, in this episode I'm gonna show you and talk to you about this post-apocalyptic dystopian Roman costume. And while I talk about it, I will address certain design points as well as handicrafting points. Although there aren't that many crafting points about this because mostly it's just a combination of stuff I had lying around. If you're making a costume like this or not, doesn't matter because on this channel I try to emphasize the costume design principles and then you can apply them to whatever. First of all, why even a post-apocalyptic Roman, or what makes it look to people that way? Well, that was actually an accident. I wasn't planning to make a Roman costume at all. What I was planning was to make a uh, kind of low fantasy, survivor style costume for the Wasteland Warrior shooting this winter. And the shooting was coming up, I had no costume whatsoever. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna throw something together in two days, and that's exactly what I did. And it looking like a Roman and me adding the final detailing in form of the stencils here and here to reinforce that look was just kind of the last two things I did. So how does it even come to be? And this is, I think, the most important point or the most important thing I can use this costume as example to uh, teach you guys about. Humans generally react to rough associations. What does that mean? It means that regardless of uh, what kind of era of Roman soldier we're talking about specifically and whether or not they had leather coats and uh, polycarbonate shields like this and all that, it doesn't matter. What matters is the moment someone sees a shield, a spear, a helmet, and kind of a conic shape around the hips, you know, the hanging, skirty-like stuff here on the hips. These are just a lot of common symbols found in a Roman soldier. So, I was just going about my business, just, you know, grabbing gear and combining it without even thinking about making it Roman. It was like, okay, it's gonna be cold. I'm gonna take a, this warm leather coat which I, by the way, just scavenged from uh, Russia. It's just authentically super old. My grandma used to own this, and it was on the unused grandma clothes pile, so I just took it with me. Uh, so I took this coat, also this scarf. Then I was like, man, it's gonna be cold on the head, so I took this Russian tank driver's helmet. And uh, then uh, I also had this shield lying around, without the stencil back then, and I was like, Okay, this makes for a pretty cool low fantasy slash zombie survivor costume, something like that. Especially if I'm gonna be fighting against other people, the shield is really useful. What kind of weapon goes with the shield? Well, obviously a spear is a good choice, so I made the spear. I will talk about the spear more later on in the video. And uh, yeah, but it, it has a tactical light. Did I show you the tactical light? And as ridiculous as this might sound, this light on the spear is the most actually realistic or useful thing about it. It's more useful than the rest of the spear. Again, I'll, I'll get to that later. We were talking about how does it even come to look like Roman. So the short answer is a basic rough shape associations. And I was just showing it uh, like in this combination to my girlfriend. And she was like, hmm, looks like a Roman to me. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, look at that. You, you have this a skirt kind of shape. You have a, the weapon choice of a hoplite. Uh, you have that helmet and that combination just makes it look like that. And I was like, okay, I'm going to roll with that. <laughs> it wasn't planned. So you see that uh, basic associations that some certain uh, elements in your costume cause, it can be a very powerful thing. And... Uh, this time it worked out great, but if it was a work for a client who, say, would be playing the enemy of the Romans or something, then I would have a problem. Because, it, like, if that kind of association was unwanted whatsoever, 
Yeah, I would have to redo something, but this time I just roll with this, because why not? Obviously, Roman is not the only style that flown into this. You can, of course, also see influences from Stalker. You can see the Russian backpack and this uh, riffled shoulder pad which I've added to the jacket. Before you ask how, it's, uh, it was the elbow from a leather jacket and then I've just used the old trusty bolts, nuts and washers technique to just fasten it to the jacket. That's it. As I said, there is not a lot of crafting that went into this. It's just, just mostly a uh, combination of stuff I had lying around. This is actually another great takeaway point, especially for beginners. You can, in the post-apocalyptic setting, combine all sorts of different influences. Yes, you can combine a Roman with a stalker aesthetic. Why not? You, you see, it works. Obviously, I mean, this costume exists, so... It works. Could I mix more stuff into it? Could I make it sort of cyberpunk at the same time too? Yes. I've rarely seen com good combinations or combinations at all of more than four things at once or so, at least four main influences. But long story short, yes you can and you often should combine different styles into your post-apocalyptic aesthetic. Uh, another thing you will notice about this whole costume is the uh, general lack or low level of grunge and um, it's not that the grunge is missing completely if it was then it would look just completely horrible you can see here in the spear for example there is some black grunge there around the corners and stuff i've talked about this whole grunge topic a lot in past videos and uh, i made a, even a separate video about how much dirt is right so if you're interested in that topic in particular, go watch that one. So let me just go over the features of this. Let's start with the shield. It's a uh, riot shield. And I have it from my friend Julian, so he had installed this uh, tactical light here <laughs> with some duct tape. And I gotta say, it is really useful, especially if you're fighting against zombies or even against human opponents. It's dark, you're just blinding them. You can see them, but they're just blinded by your flashlight. It's not a bad thing at all to have this light right here. So th that's actually also why I installed this light right here on the spear. So I'll, yeah, let's, let's talk just about the light on the spear for now. So, you might think it's a ridiculous idea, and that's exactly what I thought at first, too. It's like, oh, a, uh, you know, a tactical light and a spear, although it's, it's not a tactical light, it's um, just some cheap flashlight I got from a convenience store, like a two euro flashlight, and uh, I've just, uh, you know, bolted it onto the spear. And while it might seem like the scoped axe variety of uh, gadget, actually, it would be rather useful. First of all, it has a metallic body. So, unless someone is striking directly at your flashlight, which they might be, they will not really get it that fast. Uh, or if they get it that fast, then you can just have a bunch of those and just replace them or something like this. Or it could be made with a steel body instead of aluminum and then you would not be really able to break the flashlight. So that much about durability. As far as functionality goes, well, imagine you're a human opponent fighting me in a dark corridor. Now, you, you can't really see it well right here because the room is really well lit right now. But this would be blinding you. You would not be able to see really well. It would, at the very least, confuse you a bit, which might be enough for me to land a hit. You also can see here I've installed a uh, hinge. This thing tightened the bicycle seat, like you, you used to open this up, then shift up or down the seat, and then lock it again. So it's a tightening thing imaging. So right here it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't close more than this, but it closes like this, and I can open it up like this, and put my spear here. And this is very convenient. It's also not going to the side really fast. You would think it would, but it really doesn't. So this is a really nice guide for the spear. I mean, alternatively, you just do it without. Like this. This also works. 
but this just saves you a lot of energy in the shoulder in a long battle. Imagine you have to fight hundreds of zombies. Anyway, the spear, flashlight, is not such a bad idea. And if you're fighting zombies, well, then you see them better. And the advantage of fighting zombies is they will not specifically try to snipe your flashlight. So the only thing I actually did for the shield was add a bit of grunge and scratches and uh, this Roman stencil right here. Notice that it is blue to kind of uh, do an echo of the scarf or the scarf is doing the echo of the blue here. So those are similar or same color combinations, although this is obviously more bleak. Uh, and also it stands out. It's uh, not a neutral color like black or white. And uh, now I'm actually gonna put the shield aside so I can better show you the spear. Because really this is just a police riot shield and not, not much to it, but it does what it needs to. It could be modified more with some more cool functions and whatever, like storage for additional items, maybe a sidearm like I have here. Actually, let's talk about this before we get to the spear for the reason that this is just falling off. As I said, this costume was a rust job, so this knife here is only held in place on a loop, which is soon onto the coat itself. It's not a good attachment, not at all. You see, it's wobbling around, it's being a total dick. And during the shooting, it fell off so, so many times. So right here I've added this IEF uh, stencil, Ignis et Ferrum, with uh, fire and iron, or with fire and sword. That is one of the two last decals I added to finalize this. And you see here we have a complementary contrast of red. <laughs> I'm infamous for those red highlights, it's kind of a nuclear snail thing by now, I guess. Although in reality it's just a red highlight, which contrasts nicely with this and makes the attention pop to this. And pop! That's the power of highlights. It doesn't always have to be red, can be yellow, can be some other color that is not there otherwise and then it will pop. It just happens that red is a great complementary contrast to all those olive, green, yellowish, faded tones I'm always using. Let's hope this doesn't fall on my foot as I talk about the spear. So the spear I've made specifically for the shooting. Let's start with the base, well this shaft. It's made out of two aluminum tubes and those are in the middle connected by another tube. A really thin tube from a broom with a lot of duct tape in between there and also some super glue and then I've just stuck it together in friction. It's really surprisingly solid for what it is. Um, I gotta say this whole spear is actually horrible. Skelegrim would make a lot of fun about this. And so would I, because it's, it's just, ah, it's just so flimsy. It, um, I mean, the shaft is okay, but everything else, it's made out of a hundred parts, and it, especially the tip part and the head part, doesn't make too much sense in terms of practical combat, and it wouldn't take many hits. Like, it could probably injure someone, yes, but it, mm, it's not really that good. Like, ah. Anyway, the shaft, um, there is some sort of realism to this because I just didn't have one nice long pipe for the shaft. I just had two of these. That's it. So I had to improvise. I gotta say, however, that this notch that this has created in the middle, there is this nice little notch, it's really convenient for finding kind of the center. Well, it's not, it's not exactly at the center, but it's about in the middle of the shaft, so I kind of can feel where I am, how far I am. But this adds some nice tactile feedback. Right, let's go to the pommel, because that is necessary to end them rightly, as we all know. That's just a... Um, I don't think it's called a flange. It's uh, more of like an end cap from a uh, pipe like water pipes. I just had it in my random box of things and it's heavy. It's like a really, really heavy 
dense metal. So what this helps do is balance out the spear, so it's not so front heavy. And having it uh, butt heavy is nice for manipulating it around, or at least having the uh, gravity center somewhere in the middle, like it does have. Now, those parts are fine, but here is where the ridiculous parts start. Now this thin pipe right here, this is from a broom, from a mop, okay? It's very, very thin. It's uh, reinforced for that reason with these aluminum profiles, which are just held in place by those small 3 millimeter bolts and also held together by this... Um, hell, what is it called? It's not a zip tie. I'm forgetting the technical terms, but anyway, this thing. It's uh, for holding together pipes and hoses with this hose clamp. It's a hose clamp. And here in the front, this uh, used to be a part of a windshield wiper made of metal. And this uh, wide thing right here, that used to be a herring for putting tents, in anchoring tents to the ground. And this right here is a genuine 9 inch nail, it's sharp. So I've talked about this and I've uh, shown you this end cap attachment for this spear in my safety video. And this entire front construction serves no other purpose, like the way it is designed, but to look cool. It's tactical. That's why it looks like this. That's, that's it, pretty much. I had other options, making it more realistic, and so on and so forth, but I went with this because it just looked cool. And you can see here the flashlight is actually also red, so again, this uh, red contrast or highlight. And the one thing I usually do not do is actually the color of the shaft, which is this uh, golden color. And that's again because I just have those pipes. But uh, after looking at them, I was like, yeah, okay, I am going to take them. It, it is also a nice color. I also didn't remove it. I could have ground it off, but I actually liked it because nothing else has this golden color. And I think this again also plays into the Roman aesthetic. Did they have uh, golden colored spears? I don't actually know. But my association with Romans is gold, is one of those associations, you know, shiny, all that. Anyway, this much about the spear, I could talk about it forever, I really liked it. Uh, and it's uh, one of my favorite uh, prop works so far. Now, small but interesting details. You can see my gloves and what my arms are doing. Now this one has a thin glove with no fingers and also no protection here. Why? Because it just goes into the shield. Otherwise, um, I wouldn't be that comfortable going into the shield. And protection there, that much protection there isn't needed because the shield is already there. And on this side, however, which holds the spear, which extends out, which uh, might take damage, there is this protection. Also on this shoulder, because again, this shoulder is covered by the shield. So on this shoulder, I have protection, which as mentioned before, obviously reminds of Stalker. And uh, this right here is actually a combination of an elbow protector and a horse shin protector. So horses wear this. And uh, I've attached this plate right here on top. You might remember this as part of my exosuit from Resistopia. So this is one of the scavenged parts that survived this long. And this is just some, uh, some perforated metal from the construction store. And it's obviously positioned on the outside because you will be getting more strikes from the outside than from the inside. Okay, um, moving on to the helmet. Like, how does this work? Well, actually not at all, really. <laughs> it's just a tank helmet. And this right here is um, a visor from a riot helmet. It's not from this helmet, it's just combined. And it's not really connected, except that... See it here. Just like this, so... Yeah. I'm actually gonna leave this off, because... It's really hot in here. This is again designed to be an outside kind of photo shooting costume. The belt 
from the coat itself and this is the belt from uh, well from somewhere else it's just on top and its purpose is to give me a slimmer waistline to hold the whole coat together and the coat is actually too large for me I'm not using its zipper I'm uh, it's just uh, overlapped so overlap and overlap over the other side and it, it is held in place by the belt which makes it really comfortable actually and what I do love about coats in general is that they protect your butt what do I have here? Huh, interesting some kind of a sticky bubble gum or candy kind of thing probably something that I've landed on during the shooting what's not so comfortable are the leg protectors and those are just some British uh, riot gear like protectors. I got them from Armored Films in the UK. They just gave them to me as a present because they didn't need them anymore after a movie production. So these I've just uh, painted a bit, grunged up a bit so they're not completely new. Let me show you the texture. So this is done just using the standard grunge and dust technique that I've shown you a million times by now. Now, these are the least favorite part of the costume for me because <coughs> a riot gear in general is really difficult to move in. It's not gonna kill you, it's fine for a shooting, but uh, what a lot of people find, myself included, uh, that after running in riot gear for a while on a LARP or so, uh, especially on your legs, which are gonna be moving all the time, you're just gonna hate it. Riot gear is great for building a human wall. It's not so great for moving around. I mean, riot gear looks cool, and you would wanna wear something like this into combat. There it is. And uh, those kind of uh, plain leg protectors is actually also something that plays into the whole Roman aesthetic. One of the reasons why it looked like Roman, which made my girlfriend go like, hey, it looks like Roman, roll with that. Yeah, and the backpack, what I really like about this is it is within the same color palette, as you can see right here, as the coat. But it's brighter, so it stands out, so it gives a nice d detail and definition. And you have even another color of that variety here that is also in the same palette, but stands out. So this really adds some subtle structure and detail to this costume. I gotta say, the whole costume is actually one of my favorites so far from those that I myself made, for the particular reason that it's so simplistic compared to other things that I myself made in the past, which were super loaded and all that, uh, pimp-ass detail all over the place, uh, everything super grungy. This one is just decent and has just the right amount of detail to pop, but not more than that. And from all the costumes that I've made, this one would be pretty much on top of the list of those I would see in an actual movie as uh, opposed to a LARP costume that can be over the top and all that. So that's my personal opinion on this one. Obviously this needs to be improved in terms of functionality, especially this knife that falls out all the time. I just love dropping things on the floor with the camera running and cursing. This time I didn't curse though, because I'm a gentleman. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble here, so I hope you learned a thing or two from this uh, video, and that you like the costume as well, and that this whole thing can inspire you to make some creations of your own. If you haven't yet, joined the Nuclear Snail community group on Facebook. It's the second link in the video description. You can post your works, get feedback from me and from others. It's a really great place to be and growing rapidly, which I'm really happy about. Also, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. And if you are a regular viewer, then please consider supporting me on Patreon as well. It's the first link in the video description. As a YouTuber nowadays, especially with an alternative channel like I have, you don't make any money at all, basically. So my Patreon supporters are the only ones that keep this channel growing and developing and going in the first place. It's all about survival, right? I will see you in the next episode. Until then, hail the snail and have fun crafting.